Hello everyone and welcome back to our let's play of Brody, Hero of Equestria. And uh, time and space. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry it's been a little bit. We have been busy with you know, life, the universe, everything. Speaking of which, let's race into the TARDIS. You're doing the which, only- By the way. Hmm? Last time we mentioned that the TARDIS stood for something, and then afterwards I looked up what it actually stood for, and I forgot what it was. <laughs> it's been so long. I, I think someone in the comment section uh, already mentioned, I'm pretty sure, like, NTFWC or someone was a lot, told me what it was, and I was like, yeah, that's cool. I still like my version better in science. Your I don't know, all I remember is oh, yeah, in, in science. science. Okay. Fair enough. You do the only- oh yeah. <laughs> you shout as you leap over hooves and skip into the TARDIS, the famous spacecraft which is bigger on the inside than the outside. I'm such yeah, a scam. Yeah, actually, huh? I'm pretty impressed by the fact that you leapt over Dr. Who. <laughs> I thought the ponies are like, at least half your size. Yeah, Why I- Why are you not in the Olympics? <laughs> It seems like it'd be a pretty hard feat to do, especially without, like, drawing up suspicion or Doctor Who's tripping us on the way down. <laughs> oh, man, it's like... I think this is like the 10th Doctor's uh, TARDIS. Enter the familiar-looking blue box. Your heart racing as the massive interior swims into view. To be fair, I have no idea what this is from, though, because obviously it's not, well, from the actual show. This is clearly art. It's the from a pony thing, I'm pretty confident. Yeah, I don't probably. Know it seems like everything except the real world part of the game is from pony stuff. This is amazing! You yelp as you run over to the huge control console that dominates the room of the odd craft. The Kyo. Yeah, I can't say Sorry, it. I just... Okay. Um, I was gonna say, I... you can yelp a sentence? How the fuck is that possible? <laughs> I thought yelping I is like, not a thing you can consciously do. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like something you do when you're in pain, or the kind of thing a dog does. I don't know how you yelp a sentence. Now I'm imagining a yelp. Uh, now I'm imagining a dog yelping out Shakespeare. <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, but anyways, so, get out of there. I don't remember, but doesn't Fuck. the doesn't the TARDIS not work without Doctor Who is at the controls or something? Right, it's not moving right now, is it? Well, no, it's not. But I feel like it's probably going to, and I feel like he actually has to be the one to control it. But maybe we'll see. Like, maybe he's gonna just make us his companion because obviously we're uh, really trustworthy. I, mean, I, I remember at least one episode where he where. Just how does that work without the doctor's hmm. use? But normally the doctor, they, they, at least in that episode, the doctor set it up in such a way that someone else can use it. So I don't remember the details. It's been yeah. years since I've seen Doctor Who, and Doctor Who is so fucking convoluted, no one yeah. knows. <laughs> that is true. Uh, though to be, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. Oh no, he has his sonic screwdriver, and he also looks a what? little... weird. I want him to be my wife, I don't know why, Doctor Who... <laughs> Doctor Who's the best character. <laughs> He's pretty great, but alright. Uh, Hooves follows you into the ship, waving his sonic screwdriver around in his mouth. This is my home, not yours. You're slowly taking the whole interior, a collection of crazy science fiction gizmos and junk. Mostly just a bunch of squares. <laughs> yeah. Which are not squares, but whatever. I think those are octagons. What's that? Wait, no, I think, whatever. Hexagons. Hexagons, there we go. So it's like, no, octagons are eight shapes. I should know that. Jack Black taught me uh, what an octagon is. He's not actually black, is he? No, he's not black. I don't even know if you know the... Why uh, is he named that? 
Because that's his last name. He's called Jack Black, and he's a famous comedic, uh, comedy actor. And he was on I'm Sesame Street once, which was really funny. But normally your last name is based on what you do. What, what was your family profession to be named Black? <laughs> This this topic could get, could get very racist right now. <laughs> I feel like it's already gotten kind of racist, but I really don't know. I I never really think of black names like I, <laughs> I never really black think of names. last names. Yep. <laughs> Oops, that was a weird slip of the tongue. I don't think of black names. What are those? Black uh, of names. What? Are... <laughs> But, like, last names, I usually don't think of them like that. I mean, like, to be fair, my last name is Nolan, and I don't know what the fuck that could mean. What's a Nolan? My last name is Stoll, mm -hmm. which probably is the first to Stollen, which refers to Mineshaft. That's ah. a German word for Mineshaft. Alright. But whether or not that is actually true, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Stollen could also are... refer to Stollen, which is also a type of bread, so maybe it's also a baker, it could be either. <laughs> yeah. Man, bread's good. What's that, you ask, pointing to a picture of a seal that is hanging on a wall? Derpy, why are you so fat? Oh, that is the seal of... Garcia Lauren. Lion. Who's pauses and then looks shameful? Oh, well. He sighs. That was my best joke, too. I don't- I didn't even know what the fuck the joke was I took. <laughs> I feel stupid. Yeah, I have no idea what the joke was. Buttons. You grin ear to ear as you look at all the buttons and levers on the central console. I thought we were gonna meet button mesh. <laughs> yeah, I know. What a random thing to shout. Buttons. So many to press. So many inviting buttons. Why is there one hexagon lighted up in the background? I don't know. The TARDIS is weird. Bothering. Maybe that. The TARDIS is weird. Maybe that signifies where we are. We're in that hexagon. The universe is big. Yeah. Don't touch. Hooves moves to try to swat your hand away. Touch nothing. Press nothing. Mm. So I assume in this canon, Doctor Hooves is not actually Doctor Who. <laughs> because otherwise he would be like, why the fuck are you human? Yeah, you'd think, you'd think he'd ask that, so I assume not. Though... Um... I I wonder if he's met humans before in this universe. Like he doesn't act like. It. Huh? Yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't act like it. Well, he doesn't act like it, but he's an. Well, I was gonna say he doesn't act surprised either, but no one does in this game. It's just like, oh, you're a human, whatever. You nod, but out of the corner of you, your eye, you see a big red dr button labeled "Bad Wolf." It looks pretty inviting, and is probably the name of a dildo company. It's not. But <laughs> close. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was, I was trying to... I don't know if I was supposed to go on that. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. So we can press the button or seduce Maybe this Doctor. Maybe it's the alternate reality version of it. Well... In quest day, I did that. Well, that's all I'm thinking. I, I doubt that's what it's going to do, but I'm half expecting we're going to press the button and it's going to rain down dildos, and Dr. Hooves is going to be like, damn you. So my secret dildos so, collection. Seduce Dr. Hooves button? Or leave obviously, we've got to seduce him. We can press the button later, but, you know, this is important. You lean on the console seductively... I mean, you mentioned that he was, like, your waifu and stuff. Obviously, this is necessary. Accidentally knocking off a glass valve, which shatters on the ground, spilling out mercury vapor. Well, we're not even gonna get a try, are we? I bet we're just dead. You're really incompetent. We're, we're, yeah, like, we are. <laughs> you, you, I'm surprised this guy doesn't wake up and just die. <laughs> I mean, seriously. How he do you wakes just... up, gets out of bed, 
slips on his own pants and breaks his neck. I mean, how do you just lean on a console and break a thing full of mercury? And how would it, you... How does it... How are we identifying that it is mercury and not being like, well, we should probably get away from that. This guy is such an also, idiot. why the fuck does Dr. Who just have a thing on his... That sounds really irresponsible. Yeah, it does. Just a mercury thing he's lying around. Maybe he just knew we'd show up and that it would kill us so we'd stop bugging him. Because Dr. Hooves is psychic now, I guess. I don't know. I know they say you have two hearts, Doctor. But I think you have three. And the third is mine. That was the worst. <laughs> that was some of the worst flirting we've done yet. What does that even mean? I don't know. It makes you sound like a CA killer. <laughs> He does. I think it's three hearts, and uh, I'm gonna cut. Makes this sound out. like a really stupid serial killer. Like I, I know anatomy. You have more hearts than you say. Who looks confused and then doubted his chest? <laughs> huh? You mean a teleportation accident sent one of your organs into me? No, but sure, if it makes you feel better. Oh, wait, this is gonna get us killed. He gasps in shock. We need to have Sky just randomly break. There we go. We need to get this fixed. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is gonna get us killed. No, you take a step forwards, looking deep into his eyes. I mean that I'm in love with you, Hooves. Oh, okay. Huh? Don't you remember anything? Well, I know that this is always gonna get us killed, but I was expecting he it was going to get us killed by him, like, trying to operate on us and just screwing up and getting us dead. Being like, I'll fix it with organs, and then giving us organs we don't need and we die. But no... Uh, I'm we'll sure get we'll really bloody very fast. Yeah. Do you want to see if I'm bigger on the inside than the outside? What does that mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. You waggle your eyebrows and trace your fingers over his chin. Dr. Hooves smacks a hoof down on a big red button labeled Panic several times. <laughs> Uh, that, okay, it's an adult. Yeah, that blushing is kind of amusing, though. That kind of makes him look like he has a cold. But I don't know if it's you won't. You can only get sick. <laughs> True. Nothing happens save for a light bulb flashing in the corner of the ship. Uh, I'm really not that sort of pony. He blurts out. And I uh, saw so I snore in bed. Perhaps you could regenerate. Oh. Perhaps you <laughs> could regenerate, you suggest brightly. I could stab you, and then you could regenerate into the sort of pony that could pursue a healthy relationship with me. Jeez, our character really does act like a psychopathic serial killer. <laughs> I could stab you, and then you could get better, and then you could love me. What? It's not, it's I not I've creepy. I have seen this before somewhere. Yeah. Heck, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a Doctor Who's episode like this after, like, it's been going so long. There's probably been a psychopath in love with the Doctor. That's a big night, I remember. But I know, the idea of someone being like, oh, I could injure you, and actually, that one movie, the one with the writer, fuck, I don't know the name, but the one where the guy gets harbored. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Stephen King movie. I know the one you're talking about. Well, it was a book and then it was a movie, but whatever. See? That, that's pretty much that story. Yeah, true. You know, it occurs to me that Stephen King tends to... Lo I feel like he writes a lot of writer characters, so I could be wrong. He did. Because I could... He always wrote about writers. Alright, because I could think of another always, story always where there's a writer who had, like, an alter ego, um... That I mean, Shining life. had a... Shining, the dude was a writer. Yeah. And there was the one that was the cornfield, where he buries the people in the cornfield. He's yeah. a writer. 
Fair enough. I mean, I've heard a lot of... I've heard writers like to do that sometimes, because it does... It's easier to write about something that you are than something you aren't. Like, obviously, if you're a writer, you actually know what a writer is. So, wait, is. you're saying the guy who invented Superman was actually Superman? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying, like... <laughs> If if you're if you're a writer like it, I'm saying it's easier not it's impossible to write something without being that like you know if you're if you're a writer writing about a writer you're basically writing about your own occupation you're basically writing That's about funny. yourself if you're a writer writing about well say Superman to be fair, like in, but in many of these cases I mean he's writing about a writer in the in the supernatural. Well, yeah, that's sick. what makes but the story interesting. But I think it's often interesting. just that, I think I think part of it is also that just people like writing about... They, they can write, I'm not saying it's shallow, but it's also kind of a sense of self-importance. Mm-hmm. Because you're writing about a writer who's like, the writer is the main character of the story. Right. And you are a writer, so writing about a writer who's important is also nice. Well, yeah, that makes Coming sense. Coming from someone who wrote a main character who was a writer. <laughs> See, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying it's kind of common. I'm not saying it's a bad thing or a good thing. There's lots of ways to interpret it. That was just... That's always my For me, by Stephen King, it's more than half of his fucking writers are psychopaths, which makes well. me really question <laughs> if he wasn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's there's lots of stories about psychopaths. In fact, the one I bring, brought up uh, is basically about a crazy person. But I suppose we should move on from Stephen King to Dr. Hooves, who is probably going to kill us. It's Wait, about... Why Stephen King? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he could be with all his time traveling, who knows. Sounds pretty illogical, and I hope... And you hope that this will sway Hooves to your side. That's... That's a good idea. He backs away from you warily, pulling a lever on the center console, the massive time rotor at the heart of the ship starting to wheeze and groan. I know. To celebrate our love, let's go on a honeymoon right now. You beam, happy at having successfully seduced Hooves so easily with your brony powers. I'm glad you see it my way, you simper, posing sexily against the console. Jeez. Hey, this guy's the biggest faggot ever. <laughs> True. But I, I'm more, I'm more just looking at Doctor Who's expression here. It kind he's of. He's not impressed. He looks like he's seen a ghost. Heck, I, I feel like. I'm not sure, but the coloration actually reminds me of the Discorded Who's comic. I, 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 I was gonna say I feel like it's taken from there, but it's probably not because this is still has more color than that. But you know, it has more color. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so he doesn't have the bow tie. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot the. I think. Yeah, I. Do know. I have to look this up now? <laughs> I don't remember. It's you, been so long, but I'm pretty sure. You can if you want to. He, I think you're right. With a thud, the time rotor stops and the door opens. Okay, so I solved it. This is not a bow tie. Discard Hooves has a bow tie. This is not a bow tie. Yes, the normal Doctor Hooves has an actual tie. A green stylish tie that I approve of. Fair enough. I'm not a, I don't care about ties. <laughs> That's also fair. But more well, importantly, here we are, dear. Hooves gives a nervous grin as he waves towards the doors. Time for our honeymoon. You first. An excellent suggestion, my love. Straw out the doors, wondering what exotic location Hooves has decided to take you to. We're gonna get killed by Daleks, aren't we? Oh. Um. Seem to be standing in a forest. Well, that's slightly less exciting. Could you at least gotten us killed by Daleks or maybe turned into an Iron Man or something? I can't recall what those are called. You know what I'm talking about, I right? Know what you're talk I know what you're talking about, but I don't remember, um... Alright. Well, I think most people would know what I'm talking about. They're the, they're the dudes in the iron suits. Um... Let's see, there's, I don't know, there's totally, lots of things. Obviously quite, they're obviously called books. 
Borgs, yeah. Probably. No, I was kidding. I know. <laughs> Borg. That's from something else, Look, I don't right? Remember. Borg is from Star Trek. All right. They could put Sith Lords. Oh, my God. What a twist. Yeah, you could take us to Star Wars universe. That would be a good way to get rid of us. See me standing in a forest, surrounded on all sides by dense foliage. Hmm, the ever-free forest, you exclaim. I guess this could be sexy. That I come if he actually realizes what it is. <laughs> kind of surprising. Yeah, I know. Actually, I mentioned the idea of bringing us to the Star Wars universe, but considering that my little pony universe exists here, do you think, like, all of these other places exist? Like, do you think the Star Wars universe exists in this wor universe? Uh, in this... Maybe Luke, Star maybe, maybe Luke, Luke Skywalker is actually just, like, a huge Star Wars nerd <laughs> who then got transformed into Luke Skywalker. Yeah, maybe so... And what about well, Winnie the Pooh? Is. is Winnie the Pooh real? Is he, is he uh, actually just a Winnie the Pooh nerd? <laughs> that would be really weird. I mean, not to insult anyone who likes Winnie the Pooh, which is... Uh, I can't imagine ever wanting to live in the Winnie the Pooh universe. It's it's such a universe of, like, so just Would, would the Derby Pooh or Winnie the Pooh be called Pooh Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> probably. It's amazing. Winnie the Burrow. Burrow. Yeah, Winnie the Burrow, maybe. I don't know. Take another sip through the foliage. Only. Wait, another step. That makes more sense than sip. Take another... You drink it all. <laughs> drink this I entire mean, I I, I, I've, I've heard of taking in your surrounding, but that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Only to come face to face with a gigantic snarling manticore, its teeth barred and tail ready to sting. Oh. So this is what happens if Dr. Hooves doesn't have a companion for a while. He just starts killing people. I forgot about to that. To be fair, you did ask him to get stabbed in the chest. I know, we did. <laughs> I'm not saying we don't deserve this. I'm just saying I don't think Dr. Who in this show would have, like killed someone no. like that he would not have done this but then maybe maybe this doctor who, i mean this doctor who is maybe either yeah maybe, maybe this well, doctor who is secretly this, but i don't know that's why i mentioned like maybe he just hasn't had a companion for forever maybe he hasn't met derpy in this universe because i thought that was a fucking seal huh i thought that was a seal <laughs> oh. i'm going with the logic that derpy looks like a seal all right fair enough Turn around, but Hooves is waving from the door at the TARDIS. I've changed my mind. Have fun. Thanks. With that, the That's TARDIS... The is... hmm? Look at his eyes. <laughs> yeah. They look dumb. <laughs> they do look kind of derpy. Uh, not as derpy as actual derpy's eyes, but yeah, they look a little weird. Obviously, I still don't know why he has to be making this expression. Like, he still just looks disgusted more so than, like, he's growling. Like, That's a note. It said it was impossible to get back here after you first do it in the game. Hmm. But now you've managed to get way back here, which means we can do that one event. Which one event? You have two choices at this point. And we, last time we did the one where we stand our grind. Oh, we do? Remember. Oh. No, I don't. When you when you walked into the Ruffy Forest, mm -hmm. you got attacked by a manticore. You could yeah. either run away or stand your ground. When you stand your ground, you get Trix. saved by Trixie. Okay, yeah, so you can get killed by the but manticore, But you couldn't basically. trigger the event again, because right. whenever you go into the forest, you There's just go just to Trixie. Trixie. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, we'll try it. With that, the TARDIS vanishes with a warp. I Sure. Not very good with sound effects. You gulp as you see the manticore, stalking closer, ready to pounce. Uh, run like a little baby. You're not stupid, you instantly turn around to lay it. Bravely screaming in terror, you race through the forest, hearing the crazed beast in a hot pursuit. Your chest feels like it's on fire, despite the fact you won gold medals in all the events in Sonic and Mario at the Olympics. <laughs> Yeah! Dead one got you. <laughs> That's pretty funny. 
Uh, ma mainly, mostly because I, you know, I've actually played that game, and it's terrible. I don't oh. know why, but that's kind of funny to me. I blame Sonic. Everything Sonic in sucks. So they're Sonic all you Sonic Mario. fans. So Luigi's just like, fuck it. No one cares about Luigi. So Luigi's in the game. He just. But he's not in the title. Well, yeah. I mean, if you put everyone in the title, you'd have like a 20 word long uh, <laughs> name, which would be really funny. Sonic and blood, Mario but... and Luigi and Tails and Knuckles and Chuck Norris at the Olympics. Anyway. It makes for a bad yeah. Running seems to be surprisingly difficult. As ag agonizing cramp spreads across your chest, you trip, twisting your ankle as you fall headfirst to the ground. Instantly, the manticore is on top of you, ripping and snarling its huge snout sniffing at you. Then it grasps its claws around your arm and starts to drag you back to its cave. Shocked, you realize that the manticore is going to eat you. Oh no. <laughs> Once again, his expression cracks me up. He looks, now that we're back here, he looks, he's just like, well, this is awkward. Near the cave mouth, you see the manticore pointing with one of its paws to a tattered wedding dress. Oh, okay. So it's kidnapping us. See, we managed to seduce the manticore, and I think that's what's really important. It's the best success you ever had. Also, his fucking leg is bone. <laughs> like, the one that's further back. Yeah, uh, you mean the one to the left, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I that one, yes. Yeah, like, I see what they were trying to do, but they should have just made it face forward like the other one, because the angle that it's at does not make sense. It would not be comfortable to have your leg like that, especially paws. So, yeah. With growing horror, you realize it's not going to eat you. It's going to marry you. That- what? I liked that ending. I want to get married to the Manticore. It's not so bad. <laughs> you know, I gotta very quickly test something. You gotta go back and do this again and then get that, that you safely saved by Twixie. Okay. I'm pretty sure we can do that. Just give us a second, everyone. Okay, so we're going to cuddle it. Oops. Well, dialogue is skipping. I don't know how to turn that off. No! What? You no! Try, you skip, you no! Stop, skip. stop skipping! Yeah, oh my stuff. god, there's new stuff that I can't fucking stop skipping! What the fuck? I'm a genius! You you are a genius! We run into a new scene, good thinking, and we didn't even have to look up a walkthrough. Saper so just wanted to see us do a time loop. We'll get back to it normally. Apparently, do not use the skip option in this game because you can never stop. Oh my god. I hate. Stop skipping. I stop skipping. Yeah. It's like those skip loops. Uh, that, is, well, that is one of the few complaints I'm going to issue towards this visual novel. Because I actually, um. There's something I like a lot in a lot of visual novels that aren't this one, where if you skip. It automatically stops skipping. It stops when you... Yeah, there's two two things. Sorry. It stops skipping after you select dialogue that you've already... Like, after a choice, it'll automatically stop skipping. And or it'll stop skipping when you reach new dialogue that you've never seen before. So... Yes, that, what I meant. Yeah. Okay, that's a, so. You know, both those things are things I really love in visual novels, and I wish there was a there's some way that could have been programmed in here. But it's not too big of a deal. We'll get here manually without this dumb skip. So yeah. All right. So next time we will get to Zakora's hut and see what the rhyming uh, zebra has to say. But, as far as this part goes, thank you all for watching, and we hope to see you all next time. Take care.